NCAA tournament, man. The lights shine bright. And if your team's got a weakness, it's going to be exposed. Sometimes by the most unlikely of opponents. I'm Mark Haggard. I'm a history teacher, and I'm going rogue. As we head into March Madness, I'm taking what I've learned from 30 years on the sidelines and seeing if I can help you pick some bracket busters and win your office pool. This is the fourth in a series. If you missed any of my first three films, you're more than welcome to go back and view the others. In the first video, we took a broad look at the bracket, how many of each seed is likely to win. If you're a lower seed, a dog, you want that 11 spot. In the second film, we also looked at what regions, what cities were best for the dogs and potential traps for higher seeds. Last week, we look at specific conferences, what they do in the tournament. Don't bet against the Ivy League or a team from Virginia. You know, I mentioned the success of the MVC and the struggles of the big XII. Put the two together, and the MVC is 7-5 and head-to-head -head against the XII since 2000. 6-2 and two is a dog. They're 4-1 and one against the XII since 2010. We know that two 12 seeds potentially could win in the first round. Now, which ones? Let's see who matches up best against what the selection committee considers one of the top 20 teams in the country. Let's go rogue. I'm taking off my historian hat and putting on my coaching hat. 30 years in the film room. Now, I'm no Mike Krzyzewski or Dick Vitale, but I've coached some kids before. I can't tell you much about the motion offense or the flex offense. Rebounding, solid defense, take care of the ball. If you do those things, you got a chance. If you're deficient in one of those areas, you could be in trouble. Through my years of studying March Madness, I've come across some statistical data that shows when a higher seed might be in danger of an upset. I call it the line, 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 line. Of deficiency, efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. There are four season statistical numbers that a team should achieve during the season. If they fall short, trouble. You want to demoralize a good team? Force them to play defense for 30 seconds, miss a shot, get an offensive rebound, and put them back on defense for another 30 seconds. Playing defense is hard. Dudes don't want to play defense. They want to get out and run. They want to shoot threes. They want to dunk. If a team averages less than 12 offensive rebounds a game, that's a deficiency. Defensive rebounds. Limit a team to one shot and put them back on defense. If a team averages less than 23 rebounds per game during the season, that's a deficiency. Assists are another indicator of how well a half-court game a team plays. The line of deficiency for assists, 13 per game. Less than that, a team's relying too much on one man. Turnovers. Can a team take care of the ball, or do they freely just give it to the other team? Line of deficiency for turnovers, 12.2. If you're over that number, the struggle is real. And don't worry about the dog's numbers. We only want to know if the dog has a good advantage over the higher seed. The onus is on the higher seed to perform. So Virginia won the last national championship in 2019. Damn you, COVID. Let's go back to the previous year. Virginia was the overall number one in the tournament and was unceremoniously bounced in the first round by the University of Maryland at Baltimore County. Look at Virginia's offensive rebounding deficiency during the 2017-18 season. Only 8.3 offensive rebounds per game. UMBC averaged a little better at 9.7 rebounds per game. Could UMBC expose that weakness? In their 74-54 win, the Retrievers out-rebounded the Cavaliers 33-22. UVA weakness, exposed under the bright lights. Look also at the assists. UVA has a slight deficiency in assists as well. UMBC played unselfish basketball with 16 assists in the game to UVA's 5. Now let's go back to 2001, a first-round game played in Boise, a city that's good to the dogs in the first round. 
15 seed Hampton University Pirates beating 2 seed Iowa State. Who saw this coming? People thought that Hampton would have a nice trip out west, see the Worldwide Center for the Birds of Prey, see the old state penitentiary, and go home. Iowa State had a weakness, though, those exposed on the bright lights in Boise. See, Iowa State was below the line of deficiency for offensive rebounds. Hampton got a full 1.5 more rebounds on the average than the Cyclones did per game. Hampton was not better than Iowa State in any statistical categories that night, but they played well enough to win. And uh, Iowa State, they're in that constantly underachieving big XII. Granted, these are ad hominem selections made after the fact. Did I pick Hampton? No. But we're learning. Let's look at another 15 seed over 2 seed game that could have been predicted. 2016, Middle Tennessee State shocking Michigan State. Michigan State was not very good on the offensive glass, only getting 9.4 rebounds per game. In fact, giving up more offensive rebounds than they got. Middle Tennessee State, though, was good on the offensive glass, 11.7 rebounds per game. Michigan State gave up the ball a lot, too, averaging 14 turnovers a game. MTSU averaged only 10.8. That night, MTSU got 10 offensive rebounds, second chance opportunities to Sparty's eight. But more importantly, they forced Sparty into 14 turnovers, 15 over two, 90 to 81. Your weaknesses get exposed under the bright lights. Since 2000, 15 seeds have only beaten two seeds five times, but that happened twice in 2012. On the same day, early on Friday, Norfolk State beat Missouri 86 to 84. Statistically, what was Missouri's Achilles heel? Rebounding, again. Norfolk State averaged six more rebounds per game than the Tigers. Missouri wanted to run and shoot. Norfolk limited the Tigers to one shot on most trips. By the end of the night, Norfolk State had 39 rebounds to Missouri's 27. Later that night, 15 seed Lehigh lined up against Duke. Mike Krzyzewski coached teams don't normally have weaknesses. Duke was 27 and seven and featured eight future NBA players and four parade high school All-Americans. But Duke was below the line of deficiency in defensive rebounds. Lehigh was only slightly better, but also look at the turnovers line. Lehigh committed only 10 turnovers a game and forced their opponents into 14 and a half. Duke committed two more per game than Lehigh did. On that night, Lehigh committed just eight turnovers to Duke's 13, a difference of five turnovers. The difference in a 75 to 70 win? Hey, just for fun, let's look at the other two versus 15 games in 2012. Ohio State beat Loyola of Maryland that year, holding an advantage in every statistical category going into the game. In the fourth game, Kansas beat Detroit Mercy. Kansas was above the line of deficiency in all categories except turnovers. Detroit, though, didn't have a significant advantage in turnovers. 2015, first round in Jacksonville. Who would have chosen 14 seed Georgia State over 3 seed Baylor? Well, the state of Florida is good to the dogs, and big XII, constantly underachieving. But let's look at the season stats going into the game. Baylor, in spite of their length and athleticism, maybe because of their length and athleticism, had a tendency to give the ball up to the other team. The Bears averaged 12.2 turnovers a game, well above the line of deficiency. Against Georgia State, they made 21 turnovers. Every time it seemed that Baylor was gaining momentum would finally put the Panthers away, turnover. Deficiency exposed. For Georgia State, during their season, they averaged only 10.5 turnovers per game, nearly two turnovers less. Against Baylor, they only committed six turnovers. Because of what we know through history, you expect two 12 seeds to win in the first round. You also know that the Big East is a paper tiger. In 2019, five seed Marquette drew Murray State and Ja Morant. Marquette was below the line of deficiency in offensive rebounds, assists, and above the LOD in turnovers. Murray State was slightly better in offensive rebounds and turnovers, but look at assists. 
The Racers averaged nearly 10 more assists per game. In their first round game in Hartford, John Morant had 17 points, 16 assists, and 11 rebounds, leading the Racers to an 83-64 win. In total, Murray State had 23 assists to Marquette's 9. So, a couple of first round upsets to consider. They kind of hide out in your bracket, quiet, like they're stalking you. But now you know what to look for. Is a higher seed deficient in some part of their game? And can a dog expose that deficiency? If you can find that deficit, you can amaze your friends. Tell you what, let's do this again. We'll look at some more history and how the line of deficiency has worked in later rounds of March Madness. Until then, I hope you had fun. I did. And next time you see a five seed, only getting one shot on each possession because they're getting smoked on the glass. Remember me. I'm Mark Haggard. I'm a history teacher. And I've gone rogue.